Welcome back to Mr. Ace Math. This lesson is on compound probability, where we're talking about the events of the probability being independent events. Some stuff you should know already are the basics of probability, uh, what sample spaces are, how to use tree diagrams, as well as multiplying fractions. This mathematically is probably the most important part of the lesson. So make sure uh, you know how to multiply fractions and all this other stuff, and let's get started. What exactly is compound probability? Well, compound probability is basically just regular probability, but what you have instead of a single event are compound events. And compound events are when you have more than one event, one after the other. And it's the product of each individual event. Independent events are events that basically the first event has no effect on the second. For example, let's say we flip a coin twice. So remember what we said compound probability is. We said compound probability is basically just like regular standard probability, but instead of having just one event, we have more than one event. We can have two events, we can have three events. In this particular example, we have two events. The first event is landing on heads, and the second event is landing on tails. But let's deal with heads first. What is the probability of landing on heads? Well, the probability of landing on heads is one half. Now, our second event is landing on tails. Okay, what is the probability of landing on tails? Well, that's the same exact thing as heads. That's also one half. And then we have to multiply each of our probabilities, and that will give us one fourth. Now, I want to show you exactly why that's one fourth. A lot of you just say, hey, you multiply. There's the answer. Good job. Do it again. But I want to show you exactly why that is with a particular uh, tree diagram. Here we have a tree diagram for what happens if we flip the coin twice. This column here represents our first flip, and this represents our second flip. When we flip the coin the first time, it can land on heads or it can land on tails. Now, if we land on heads the first time, we can still get heads or we can still get tails. Doesn't really matter. Same thing for if we land on tails first. We can still get heads or we can still get tails for our second flip. Long story short, I want to get to the sample space. This sample space has four outcomes, and that's why our denominator is four. How many of those outcomes have heads for the first event and tails for the second event? Well, that's this one. Heads for the first event, tails for the second event. Heads for the first flip, tails for the second flip. And that's exactly why our probability is one-fourth, because of the four outcomes here, only one of them has the exact uh, outcomes the way we want them. Heads for the first flip and tails for the second flip. Now, what if we had the same situation? We flip a coin twice and we want to land on tails for the first event and then tails for the second event. Well, what's the probability of getting tails for our first event? Well, that's going to be one half. And then tails for our second event. That is also still one half. So then we multiply our probabilities and we end up getting one fourth. Now, again, I want to I want to take a second to look at the tree diagram so you know exactly why that is. Well, our sample space has four outcomes. We have one, two, three, four, and that's why our denominator is four. Of those four outcomes, which ones uh, does it happen that we get tails for the first event and tails for the second event? Well, that's this one here. That's the only one. And therefore, since that's the only one out of four, our compound probability is one fourth. Again, I just want to take a second to stress that each of these flips are independent events. Well, what does that word independent mean? Independent means that uh, it's not affected by. If you say that you are independent, it means that you're not affected by the actions of anybody else. Well, independent events really mean the same thing. They're events where the second event isn't affected by the first event. So here, when we flip our coin the second time, it doesn't matter if we land on heads or tails. That has no effect on the second flip at all, and therefore they are independent events. So let's say that we're not talking about a coin anymore. Let's say that we're talking about a standard number cube. Uh, you might hear it referred to as a die or uh, a number cube. Either way is fine. It means the same exact thing. So we're saying here that we have two events. Well, what are they? The first is the probability of rolling a one. Well, what's the probability of rolling a one on a standard number cube? Well, there's six sides. One of those sides has a number one on it, so that's going to be one six. 
The second event that we're looking to get is landing on an even number. Well, what's the probability of landing on an even number? How many even numbers are there? Well, there's three even numbers, two, four, and six. That makes three. So that's three out of six. And we're going to multiply those. But before we multiply those, we can actually reduce the three over six. We're going to divide each of those by three, and that's going to reduce to one half. And then we just bring down one six times one half. So now what do we do? Well, we just multiply one six times one half, and that will give us one twelfth. And again, I just want to go over exactly why the probability is one over twelve. Well, it's important to know that um, when we have six outcomes that are possible for the first event, and there are six outcomes possible for the second event, to find this total number of events that are possible, we multiply six times six, and that gives us 36. So that means that Overall, there are 36 possible outcomes that we can have when we, when we roll a number cube twice. So of the 36, how many different ways are there to end up with a 1 on the first roll and an even number on the second? Well, there are 3. We can roll a 1 and then we can roll a 2. We can roll a 1 and then roll a 4. And we can roll a 1 and then roll a 6. Now, these are our 3 outcomes, but that's going to be 3 over 36. If we reduce 3 over 36, we end up with 1 12th. Therefore, our probability is 1 12th. Here we have two different events. The probability of landing on an odd number for the first roll and a number less than 6 for the second roll. Well, let's talk about the first event, the probability of landing on an odd number. Well, how many odd numbers are there? There's three of them, three out of six. There's a one that you can roll, a 3 you can roll, and a 5 you can roll. Therefore, there are 3 odd numbers out of a total of 6. Now, the second event, a number less than 6. How many of those are there? There's 5 out of 6. 1 is less than 6, 2 is less than 6, 3 is less than 6, 4 is less than 6, and 5 is less than 6. So there are 5 out of 6 we can roll. Now, we just take our probabilities and multiply them. Now, before we even multiply them, we can actually reduce 3 over 6 to one half and bring down the rest. So now I've got one half times five six and that's gonna give us five over twelve. Again, I want to show you exactly why that is. Remember, the total number of outcomes is actually 36 because there are six possibles for the first event and six possibles for the second event. Six times six gives us 36. Well of those 36 different ways, how many ways can I roll an odd and then a six? Well, I can roll a one then a 1, a 1, then a 2, a 1, then a 3, a 1, then a 4, a 1, then a 5. I can also roll a 3, then a 1, a 3, then 2, 3, then 3, 3, then 4, 3, then 5. And I can also roll a 5, then 1, 5, then 2, 5, then 3, 5, then 4, 5, then 5. It seems like it's really complicated, but you're just saying here that was an odd number for the first outcome and then rolling a number that is less than 6 for the second outcome. Now there's 15 out of 36. Since 15 out of 36 can reduce to 5 over 12, our probability is just 5 over 12. How about here? We have two events. The first event is landing on a number that is greater than 4. And what's the probability of landing on a number greater than 4? Well, that's 2 out of 6. Because there are two numbers on the number cube that are greater than 4. 5 is greater than 4, and 6 is greater than 4. And that's where we get 2 out of 6. Then, not 5. What's the probability of getting a number that's not 5? Well, that's 5 out of 6. Because you can land on 1, you can land on 2, you can land on 3, you can land on 4, and you can land on 6. But you can't land on 5, so that's only 5 out of 6. Now that we have our two probabilities, we just multiply. But we can reduce 2 over 6, and that's going to be 1 over 3, and then bring down the rest. So now we have 1 third times 5 6, and that's going to be 5 over 18. Again, just want to show you exactly what that looks like. Remember, our first outcome needs to be greater than 4, and the second number needs to be any number that's not 5. So our outcomes can be 5 then 1, 5 then 2, 5 then 3, we can roll a 5 and then a 4, and we can roll a 5 and then a 6. We can also roll a 6, then a 1, a 6, then a 2, a 6, then a 3, a 6, then a 4, and a 6, then a 6. Now that is 10 outcomes. And remember, 
6 times 6 is 36. So that's really 10 outcomes out of 36. And if we reduce 10 out of 36, we get 5 over 18, and therefore our probability is 5 over 18. How about here? We have five tiles and they spell out the word class. Here we're talking about probability with replacement. With replacement is pretty simple. It basically means you take out one from the first event and then put it back. Here's an example. Let's say we're looking for the probability of drawing the letter L and then drawing the letter L again. So what's the probability of getting an L from the word class? Well, there's five total letters. And of the five letters, there's one L, therefore it's one-fifth. Now, we basically, with replacement means that we take out what we're looking for, or one of what we're looking for. Here we were looking for the letter L. So we take the letter L out. But we're replacing it. We're placing it again. So we just put it right back in the word. So now we still have the word class. Now what's the probability of getting the letter L? Well, there's still 1 out of 5, so therefore it's 1 fifth. So now we have our probabilities and we'll multiply 1 fifth times 1 fifth, and that gives us 1 out of 25. So our probability is 1 out of 25. Here, what's the probability of drawing an S and then drawing a vowel? Well, let's talk about the S first. How many S's are there? Well, there's 2. Out of how many? 5. So the probability of drawing an S is 2 out of 5. Now, we basically take one of the S's out, it doesn't matter which one, okay, and then we're replacing it, so we're putting it right back. So we still really have the word class. So what's the probability of the second event now? The probability of getting a vowel. Well, there's only one vowel, that's the letter A. Out of how many letters? Five. So the probability of getting a vowel is one out of five. Now we have our probabilities, we multiply them, and we get two out of 25, and that is our probability. How about the probability of selecting an S and then a letter that's not an S? Well, the first event is S. The probability is 2 out of 5 because there's two S's out of 5 letters. So we take one of the S's out, again, doesn't matter which one, and we're saying it's with replacement. So we're putting the S right back where we got it. And that's going to be class. So now we're looking for the probability of a second event, which is not getting an S and getting any letter that's not an S. Well. How many letters there are not S's? There's three. The three letters are C, L, and A. So that's going to be three out of five. Now that I have my probabilities, I multiply them. And that's going to give me six out of 25. Just because we've been using two events for the last examples doesn't mean you can't have more than two events. Here we have a coin. And let's say we flip it three times. So we're looking for the probability of landing on heads three times. Well. How does that look like with probability notation? Well, it's going to look like this. The probability of landing on heads for the first event, that's the first event, and the probability of landing on heads for the second event, and then the probability of landing on heads for the third event. Even though it has three events, I don't want you to feel intimidated. We've learned enough that we know all we have to do is find the probability of each of the uh, events separately. Now remember, the three events are landing on heads the first time, landing on heads the second time, and landing on heads the third time. So, let's talk about the first one. What's the probability of landing on heads the first time? Well, that's one half. How about the second time? One half. And the third time? One half. And exactly the same way as we've done it in the past, we just take our probabilities for each of the individual events and multiply them. Now, let's multiply the first two, the first and second events. We're going to have one half times one half, and that gives us one fourth. Then we bring down the rest that we haven't used yet to times one half. Now we've got one fourth times one half. And all we have to do there is multiply that, and now we have one eighth. So that's our probability for flipping a coin three times and landing on heads all three times. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. When you're done, unpause the video. After a 3, 2, 1 countdown, your answer will be displayed. Go.
Okay, so let's go over our answers. Number one, the answer is one fourth. Number two is one twelfth. Number three is two ninths. Number four is one thirty sixth. And number five is one thirty sixth. Let's review. An event that consists of more than one event or parts is called a compound event. In a compound event, when the first event has no effect on the second, they are called independent events. Remember, that word independent by itself just means um, not affected by outside factors. So independent events are events that don't affect each other. To find the probability of compound events, you have to blank the probability for each event. We simply multiply. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Questions? Comments? Leave them down below. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.